How many times do you simulate this before? I'm assuming thousands, wherever it is, or and, but like, um, how do those simulators work? And are they are you like practice landing in like the middle of a desert, um, or do you have like a like a I'm thinking like a movie studio, or you can uh, like a big warehouse where you can adjust the, the atmosphere in there to test? How do you guys practice for this? Okay, well, let me tell you what we don't do. <laughs> Uh, what, what we can do, because it's too difficult, too expensive, and not, not, not worth it, is to try to, to, to exercise that, that whole sequence here on Earth. The, the conditions on Earth of atmosphere and gravity are so far off. We don't okay, even it's try. Worthless. It's worthless. It's expensive. So the best we, we do, right, the worst we can do, and what we do, is, first of all, for each component... Of, of this system, we do tests, right? Like for example, for the parachute, we do a test that try to mimic the conditions when we open the parachute as much as we can, right? To make sure that it's the right design and it's, and it's built properly too. And the same with the landing radar. We put the landing radar in a helicopter and we try to replicate the conditions that the radar is gonna see on Mars and we fly through the Mojave Desert and there are different terrains, you know, different velocities, and then, and then we process the data from those tests and we, uh, uh, we build mathematical models of, of, of that component. For each one of these components that we test separately, we build mathematical models. And then we put it in, in a simulation, right? All those mathematical models, we put them together and then we make the system land in a simulation, right? Where we model all the components and also we have to model the Martian environment, like where we're landing, we're going to get winds and the, the atmosphere density is changing, right? And the, the places where we don't know exactly where things are, which is, we don't know anything exactly, we actually, statistically, we add noise. We add, we add, we add errors that, we've, that try to envelope the uncertainty and the error in each component. Like, for example, the, the, the winds, we don't know exactly, so we add a, a, a random component to the winds. And then we, we use a, a technique called Monte Carlo, which is from the, Monte, the casino. So it's actually, it's after that, which essentially, it, because it's statistical, where we make the system land thousands, if not tens of thousands of times in the simulation. And then we look at statistically which one landed properly and which one landed, you know, failed, right? So statistically, we can say, well, 99, you know, 9% of landed, okay, but then you are good. And sometimes, no, here there are, you know, we are only having success with 90%. Okay, what is that 10% that is not working? I said, do we have a deficiency in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, on the uh, simulation or, or just simply uh, the design is improper, so we need to go fix the design? Uh, uh, and so that's, that's what we use. That's the best we use. That's why we call the seven minutes of terror, one of the many reasons, is that, the, we haven't done it. Essentially, the, you we actually done do it. it. The computers do it, it, but you haven't. Right, exactly. So then that's why we are so concerned that it's not going to work because if we forgot a little piece of physics, we have a small error in that simulation that doesn't expose our, our mistake, then Mars will tell us of our, our mistake and it's too late by then, right? So it's... And, uh, so that's that's why it's so so unnerving. It's just the fact that we, we the first time we try it is when we try it, right? In, in in and when we are betting all those years of work and sacrifice in seven minutes. And I, I know that feeling when you work so hard on something and there's an element of luck to it or or circumstance, but when it hits, it's it's the best feeling in the world. Have you worked on projects that have gone the other way? I was never involved in, a, in you know, working in it. I've, I've always, you know, I've, I've, I've been consultant in, in one of them, I guess, that did not work. But uh, all the ones that I've worked on have worked. So <laughs> I've been, been successful. And it's actually kind of, I mean, I'm trying to still explain to myself why, I mean, I was very nervous the day of the landing and it had nothing to do in terms of not trusting the, the engineers working on it in this one, uh, some of them, you know, uh, my friends and, and had tremendous respect for them, but I was very nervous. And maybe it's because we, you know, there are many reasons why maybe one was simply, you know, we just been so lucky. We've been very successful landing these rovers. 
is our is our uh, luck going to run out at some point? I know, <laughs> I know it's not a very scientific way of thinking, right? But we are humans after all, you know, with emotions. And sometimes uh, when, when we, after we finish doing all that we can do with our brain, right? Then the heart takes over, right? And <laughs> it starts telling you things and making you lose sleep at night. And then you got to say, no, but wait a second. I know that this is the same as before, and we tested this, and we tested, and these guys did a tremendous job in there, and I trust them, and they worked really hard, and I, I saw them doing it. So then you kind of, the brain takes over again and tells the heart, you know, we're going to be fine. But then when you land, it's all about the heart, right? It's not about the brain. It's a room of emotional emotional scientists <laughs> and engineers, which I love. Um, I think that's what's so you know, I don't know, endearing about it, frankly. Uh, let me back up. Like, what what is the um, the purpose of the Perseverance rover, which just landed? It landed in Feb- February eighteenth of twenty twenty one, just um, a couple weeks ago. What what's the end goal for NASA and for for us to to get from this rover on Mars? All of these missions have multiple goals, but there are some main goals. The main goal here is you know, in the, the the previous rovers, right, from Pathfinder to Curiosity, there. The object, they're all associated with the, with the goal of determining whether there was life on Mars 3.5 billion years ago, 4 billion years ago, when the conditions of Mars were, you know, were very different. It was, a, you know, uh, they had an atmosphere, it was a, 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 a have oceans and lakes, and, um, and uh, it was a warm planet, and very similar to the same con- to the conditions of Earth at that time, where on Earth life was starting, right? So the question is, well, if the conditions were there, then there is a chance that life actually also uh, uh, originated on Mars at the same time. Then Mars changed, right? Became lost its atmosphere, became very dry and cold, right? And uh, but the question is, during that time, did life, uh, you know, originated on Mars? And uh, and that's a question, a very important question that the scientists, uh, not just the scientists, but, right? I mean, the philosophers, everybody wants to know whether we are alone in the universe. If, is, is life just a pure ter- ter- terrestrial phenomena, right? And, and, and that's it, right? I mean, it's, it's a very difficult, the condition has to be perfect, incredible, and, and only happens in the whole universe, only happening on Earth, right? It's probably unlikely that that's the case, but it would be awesome to prove that that's not the case just by showing within our solar system that life actually t- took hold in more than one place, right? So that's why we're interested on Mars. Now, the previous missions after Curiosity, the main objective was not detecting life itself. It didn't have the capability, the instruments to do that, but to detect whether the conditions uh, for life to, uh, uh, to originate on Mars happen in the in the distance past, past, right? So one of them was finding water that stayed uh, Which it in did, liquid right? state. And found right, evidence that water did exist, right? And they found, check, you know, water exists, you know, right pH, so not too salty, not too acidic. Wow. Perfect for life, you know, and, and, it, and it lasted millions of years, which is time is always important in the recipe of life. All of the things are were there. So now, now with Perseverance, we need to go answer the... It's time to answer the final question. Okay, cool. But was there a life or not, right? And Perseverance is going to try to do that in two ways. One, you have instruments on board, more sophisticated instruments that work in a different way than the, the previous uh, to, to look for, they call it biosignatures, which are, you know, again, to non-expert like me, they are indirect evidence that, that, you know, of minerals and the way they were deposited that were the action most likely the action of biological, uh, 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 you know, processes, right? So that's, and that's what we call biosignatures. Bio Detecting life on Mars is very difficult, right? But trying to find biosignatures, it's, it's the best we can do at this point. Why is detecting life so difficult there? It's a life itself. The definition of life is difficult. And, uh, and it's not, you know, it seems that it's not, uh, uh, you know, and it's not an easy, you know, it's a controversial thing, right? So the best way to, to but and also because being, the, being able to say there was life on Mars or be able to say, we know a place that there was life that is not Earth is such a huge statement that the amount of proof you need is, is overwhelming, right? So the second way that uh, perseverance is going to help is it's going to take these 
samples of soil and, <clears throat> and rock, encapsulate them in, the, in these cylinders and, uh, and, and uh, seal them such that another mission that we are working on it called Mars Sample Return is going to take these samples and bring them back to Earth. Now, here on Earth, we have all the instruments, sophisticated instruments. We can make the measurements, argue the scientists with, you know, and, and now you can have, you know, we, we feel that if there, if there, you know, if there was life fossils in that, in, in those samples, we'll be able to come up with a scientific consensus. Right and uh, and try to do bringing those instruments to Mars is very very difficult. It's much easier to bring a piece of Mars to the instruments on Earth. So that's the second uh, way that perseverance is going to help answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs>